allowing dust to gather for years. These souls are gray and dusty. By their bad example, many, many souls are soiled. They do not realize this, and they avoid what is difficult. These souls know much, but they do not experience me. They give me only the crumbs, what they do not need. Yet they think they deserve a reward. These souls enjoy my kindness, but never think of what they should do in return. This is the pain in my soul. The Lord later said, Anyone can read my words, but only those who come to me can understand my longing to save souls. Give yourself to this goal. Believe the words. If each Christian saved just one soul, no one would be lost. Our Lady said, I do not want one soul condemned. All must desire the same thing. That is why I place this beam of light, the flame of love, in your hands. Jesus said, You mothers must extend the warmth of your homes, even to those children who are now grown. You must imitate my mother, who always provided me with her love. Her powerful intercession gained this great grace for all of you. She does not want to perform a public miracle. This happens at her great shrines. Rather, she wants every family to be a sanctuary where she works miracles in the hearts. She places in your hands the flame of love which will blind Satan who wants to rule over families. Blessed Mother said, My anguish comes from the danger that threatens the whole world because families are no longer places of prayer. I want to save the world, and I want you to be the first to experience this immense power to blind Satan. The Lord said, Renounce your own entertainment. Do not allow any passing diversion. For you, only one thing is necessary, to share in my saving work. Do not say that I am very strict. You must renounce yourself moment by moment. You cannot stop, even for a short time. All passes away. Only your work for souls remains. The Lord spoke. Since you could not come to church today, I came to you. Oh, the lowliness and the coldness that always surrounds me. This is why I stay close to you. I will stay for a long time. Later, Jesus said, Let my precious blood fall upon you. My drops of blood are a bank check. The check is valid until the end of the world. The soul, in God's grace, can cash it in at any time before their death. Each soul must use this check as frequently as possible. It is the ransom paid by my precious blood. If put off until the end, the time will be short to gain its full value. Take advantage while you still have your full vigor. The Lord said, This shows you how great is the harvest, and how scarce are the workers. Keep working for souls. Put all your effort into this work. This was after the Lord had shown her a picture, shown Elizabeth a picture, where on every side there were innumerable souls. Uh, They were suffering in soul and body. Jesus said, Loving me again and again is important. This effort dispels my pain. What you give me each day is not important. It is only important that you never stop giving. The Lord said to Elizabeth, You are really very weak. The world must see that the divine will is manifested through the weak. Experiencing your weakness is no obstacle. The cause only needs your humility in order to succeed. 
Jesus said, You must also accept me with my beaten body and pierced hands, feet, and heart. I sacrificed myself. You can never do too much for me. Jesus later said, The great storm is coming, and it will carry away indifferent souls who are consumed by laziness. The great danger will erupt when I take away my hand of protection. To desire requires sacrifices. Desires and sacrifices are inseparable. Jesus said, I lived in fear of this night in Gethsemane. It is an honor to share in my sorrow. This is a sign that you share in my work. The Lord said, Patience, perseverance, and fidelity keep you close to me. Later the Lord said, The spreading of the flame of love must be the main purpose of your life. Let it flow smoothly like a stream of water which nothing can stop. This purifying grace saves and gives life. Later, our Lord said, I want to give an increased measure of love, unknown until now. Accepting this grace demands great sacrifice. Always try to go higher. Do not look to the right or the left. Look only into my eyes. Later he said, Put aside the newspaper and help suffering souls come to heaven. Again our Lord said, You constantly adore me. How I wish there were many of you. I thirst for your words because they quench my yearning for souls. On the cross I exclaimed, I thirst. I say the same to consecrated souls. I reserve you totally for myself. Do you prefer this reading that distracts you? Do I not give you all that you need? I do not demand this strict sacrifice from others, but you are my beloved. Every instant away from me is too much. My love does not rest. Brothers and sisters, the man who translated this devotion into English is a, a Jesuit priest. His name is Father Rona. And he, I want to share with you now some of his thoughts. The Blessed Virgin pleads and begs that we share in her work by our prayers, sacrifices, family holy hours, and fasting. These writings show how the Blessed Virgin feels and acts now in our day. It reveals her divine motherhood and her intense preoccupation with the salvation of her children's souls. Listen to her own words. Take this flame of love of my heart, light your own heart, and pass it on. With this flame, and kindle all the hearts in the whole world. Pass it from heart to heart. The heart and center of this cause is the flame of love of Our Lady's heart. This flame of love is the greatest grace God has given the world since the Word became flesh. The purpose of this flame is to blind Satan so he loses control over souls. These souls will then regain their freedom so they can choose eternal life. The central goal is the salvation of every soul in the world. Although all these tremendous graces will come from the flame of love, people must know about this flame and how they are expected to respond. This is the cause. The center of the flame of love is adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. The diary stresses a nighttime hour when normally no one is there. Our Lord wants someone adoring the Blessed Sacrament in every parish church at every hour. Our Lady promises that no one who dies in the parish while someone is adoring will be condemned. The devotion includes a strict fast of bread and water every Monday until 6 p.m. Thursday and Fridays are also days of strict fast until 6 p.m. 
Intertwined with these prayers and devotions and sacrifices is the spirit of belonging totally to God. All that is not of God and which absorbs the human heart must be removed. Please do not be overwhelmed. Our Lady does not expect the average lay person to suddenly reach these spiritual heights. Many sufferings and spiritual favors are unique to Elizabeth, to whom the messages were given. The diary is not systematic. It describes Elizabeth's many struggles. As you read the diary, you'll see, as I did, many little things that you can do easily now. The diary will get inside you. When it does, you will discover that Our Lady has placed her flame of love in your heart. If you persevere, you will experience all the blessings which God intends for you. May the flame of love be lit in your heart. Why do we need this devotion? Our Lady, by her intercession, has gained from the Heavenly Father the greatest graces in the history of the world since the Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. This new devotion alerts the world to these new graces and instructs us how to receive them. What is the flame of love? The flame is Jesus Christ Himself. He is the gift of the Father. God uses this image because we can easily perceive ourselves receiving a flame and passing it on. What is the main prayer of this devotion? The most important is the ejaculatory prayer. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all humanity. Besides the above prayer, the Lord gave her the following prayer as an effective weapon against Satan. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. The Lord told Elizabeth that this prayer will blind Satan and souls will not be led into sin. The purpose of the devotion, that every soul be saved. Another clear purpose is that souls in purgatory go to heaven as soon as possible. Whenever he is given, meaning Satan, an opening, Satan spreads his influence into every aspect of everyone's life. His powers block God's graces and do not allow the person to turn to God, to repent, or to be freed. Blinding Satan means that he loses this power. Then God's graces can be effective and the person can respond. For example, an active alcoholic is caught up in an addiction. Alcohol has power over him. By becoming a recovering alcoholic, he is free to fulfill his obligations. Alcohol no longer has power over him. So when Satan is blinded, souls are free to respond to God's grace. Through a few people, a great outpouring of graces will change the world. No one must refuse my invitation. Now what do our Lord and Our Lady ask of us? As individuals, they ask that we dedicate holy hours to adoration and reparation. This can be in church or in the home, in the adoration chapel. Make little sacrifices for souls. Be detached from worldly distractions. Fast on bread and water on the appointed days. It's time to go, my friends. Be sure to tune in next week and let yourself be taken to Jesus through Mary. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.